Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about power meters and what's behind your power meter and also how it's wired. So stick around. So we're just going to take the wire, gently pull down. The cord is pretty much melted together. So there we have our end, our finished end with our... So here's a power meter that we're doing. It's 200 amp underground. And if you didn't watch the underground video yet, go back and, and watch that first. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can see it. But basically, it comes from the pole out there and then all the way underground. And then over here up this, up this pipe, or sorry, up this guard, it's in a piece of tech cable and then it comes into the meter. So we have a piece of 250 KC mill or MCM cable here. We have our two lines, one which is black and one which is red. So that's gonna be our 240 between the two. And then we also have a white here, which is identified white. Now this green wire here is a number six ground. It's our main ground and it's gonna to ground to our first point of connection. Here in Canada, we do that. So we're gonna to go to here, and this is also a bonded meter base. So you can see the screw in the back there. That bonds right to the back of the meter base. From there, when we go into the house with the secondaries, we're going to bond to the back of the actual box itself. Um, and also the cable, the sheathing on the cable here, you can see there's a bond connector on there. That goes into a separate lug, also bonding to the casing. Now a standard meter, this is the line and this is the load. So I showed you on the meter out there, but this is where the power comes in and then it comes through here, bypasses through here, and then goes into your house. The meter is what actually meters it. So we have our journeyman Luke here with us from the UK. Uh, he's doing the meter tie in today. So you can see that he's gonna actually tie that main ground in underneath that, that uh, bonding lug there. So I wanna clarify the difference between a ground and a bond. So the main ground, there's only one point of ground when it comes in. Everything else from there, uh, the bonds are what bonds the equipment together. So for example, this piece is metal and then we go to plastic. So we need to bond this piece of metal to the inside piece of metal in the hose, which is the main panel. Everything from there on out needs to be separated. So we're gonna take that bonding screw out in our main panel, but we'll show you that after. So. Where this is an underground uh, service, on the left hand side we're coming up at the line. We actually, we're entering the bottom but we have to loop up around and come on to the top. So he's going to start there with his neutral and get his neutral in first. And he's going to shove that back out of the way and then line it up with the top of the lug. All right, so you can see Luke's just about finished tying the top in. Uh, he's got the neutral in the center here, and then he's got the black and the red. It really don't matter which way these two go because it's split phase. Uh, it's not like three phase in this case, as long as we get 240 between the two. You'll notice that uh, where it's aluminum wire, we have no lux or any ox on it, or whatever you want to call it, which is that stuff there. That just keeps the wire from oxidizing. And we usually give them a good tighten down, um, and then we follow the torque settings. But we use that. We usually come back over and tighten them up one more time after we're done. So again, now the top of this is the main ground and then we have the, uh, the bond to the bond bushing and the back of the casing to bond the uh, tech connector, which is this here, which is for the cable for the underground out there. And then uh, our neutral and our two hots. So now we're gonna start working on the secondary side, which is gonna go down and in and into the power panel. Now as you can see, we're putting the bottom of the secondaries up into the meter first. We're going to tie those on and leave them hanging at the LB and that just makes it easier for us to tie those big cables into the bottom of that. Right now as Luke is stripping the piece of number four, which is the bond between the casing of the metal casing on the meter and the panel inside. And that's going to go right into the back of that, right back there once he squeezes it in. So now as you can see, we have the bottom tied in. This is our neutral in the center and then our two hots. Um, and you can see they run down through into the pipe inside and as well the number four uh, bond, which bonds casing to casing. So we'll move inside here. Where Luke is. And here's the main panel. Uh, you can see that we've bonded the number four to the casing. And we're actually now gonna remove this bonding screw because this is actually the second point of connection. So we can't have our neutrals or our grounds tied together. And then our main uh, neutral is gonna go on our neutral bus. And then our two hots are gonna go on to our main breaker. 
So is that how you do it in the UK, Luke? No. It's all backwards here. Yeah. Backwards? Yeah, all backwards in Canada. So you guys go to one... We have 240. We have it similar, but we don't, like, as electricians, don't, atu don't touch the mains incoming into the property. We actually have a separate company, like a separate power company that do that. So you say Nova Scotia Power here would actually do that theoretically in England. They would come and hook it up to your meter and then you'd come out your meter because there would be some tails and an isolator switch and you'd be able to isolate it, tie into that and then come out of that into the house. So they take it to the beginning of the house and you guys take yeah. it there after? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and keep tying this in. So how do they actually meter it over in the UK? Uh, there is a like an electronic digital meter that just sits on on it. Is that line voltage or is it low voltage? Out to it? It's uh, I don't know because the uh, it's called the DNO. Okay. Um, the the distribution network I think it's something something along the lines of that. But okay. They um they come in comes into the side of the house mm -hmm. because all houses pretty much in England are brick. Mm -hmm. on the outside comes into a white plastic box on the outside or mm -hmm. it's, I think it's plastic box and then it goes in from there it just sits in there you have different ways you have a TT system a TNS system um, and then there's another system that I've forgotten since I've been here so you guys are light years ahead of us pretty much <laughs> I think I think wiring a house in England you could probably do in a day and a half seriously yeah, a lot quicker than you can do here. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. A lot quicker. But there's a there's not so many there are rules and regulations that you have to follow in England, but yeah. there seems to be more here. Okay. Um, especially with different electronic like electrical providers that you have. So I'm just showing there where he's putting the no locks or the anti ox on the cable. And that's because it's aluminum and, and you guys might say well why use aluminum anything over number eight here in canada we can use aluminum and we use aluminum on our main conductors where it comes into the service just the same as the power utility uses aluminum on their lines that and that's just uh that's just to keep the uh the price down because if it was copper it would be outrageous yeah and in england you they used to use aluminium not aluminum yeah. Even though it's how most people say it over here, um, they used to use that back in the day, but they they don't use it anymore. It's all copper. Everything's yeah, copper. Everything gets changed to copper. I think there's some light fixtures in England that might have like some aluminum aluminium ends. Yeah. Aluminum ends. So, but now it's, it's all copper in England. Like they will they won't use aluminium. I think the underground wiring, if I remember correctly from college. Yeah. They have some in that. In aluminum, but that's what it's all underground. Over here, it's all overhead, isn't it? Yeah. I think there. Is, I think it is in aluminum. So you don't have any overhead poles over there? No, it's all underground. You have like your main. They're called. Um, what's the name of them? They're called uh, like they're like big, giant like Christmas tree. I can't even remember the name of them. That's how bad it is. And they carry all your power, and then it goes to a like a uh, a transformer mm -hmm. to an estate like. Uh, like here, you got suburbs. So here on underground, we call them URD boxes. So they're underground distribution boxes, yeah. basically. So we ha we have like a, a tra like a three phase transformer yeah. that does like an estate or a suburb, and then a whole subdivision. A whole subdivision. You guys call them suburbs? No, you. We, you I don't know. You can't, do can't, <laughs> can't we call them like estates. I think in the U.S. Yeah. They do. And of course, as I mentioned outside, that we have to tighten these down. Usually we come back over them a second time, um, just because they tend to settle when they're into the lug like that. Our panels are much smaller in size. They're like a lot smaller. Really? Yeah. They do have some like this. This is more like an industrial, like I've worked on a few on the industrial side, but these are a little bit like our house ones are a little bit smaller yeah. they come with I think they come like you can have like 
20 circuits on it, but and it's okay. all like different. Like it's all RCBOs and stuff and RCDs. Okay. I think they're just, they're coming away from RCDs in England um, and going to RCBOs. So each individual circuit trips and has its own um, like fault current going through it. Okay. So it's like a, it's kind of like an. Yeah. How many here. circuits? I think you can get up to about. On a small one, I think it's like 16 to 20 or 20 to 20. Okay. Because this is a, a 40 80 circuit panel, guys, so it's 40 full size or 80 mini circuits. And then the generator panel is actually 24 circuits, so we have quite a few circuits in this house. They don't have like minis but in England. You guys don't have minis? No. So now we're down to the two hots, and um, you'll probably notice that outside where the cable, one of them had a red marking on it, and the other one was black. In here, this is just some wire that we had at the shop. So again, it doesn't matter if we identify it red or black, where it's single phase. You wrecking the place, man. So our actual ratchet cutters are in our power line bag. So we're just gonna use these uh, bigger cutters, the wire cutters here. It's better than using a recip. Just so we don't look like a bunch of hack animals. If Luke can squeeze it. Yeah. There you go. A bit at a time. I'll come back to this. So you can see inside here now we got it all tied in. The two hots are under, the neutral's under, and that's uh, under the ground or the bond, I should say. And then the bond screw is removed. So we'll move back outside here. And you can see Luke is playing with his duck seal <laughs> and that gets put right inside that hole there and gets smeared in around and that just sort of keeps the moisture out. That's what we have to do here in Canada. And actually, trust me, the inspector checks. And then we also have to have these two drain little drain holes on the bottom here, tiny little ones, just to let the water out before we put the cover on. He's going to smear that in there all good. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. So that's the meter base cover. That's what goes on there. He's just going to put that cover back on, button her up, pull that. Uh, so this goes on here, slides up into place, locks down. So there's what your meter looks like on the inside before they actually put the meter on. And then he's putting that cover on, and that'll be tickety boo, Bob's your uncle. Fred's your nephew. Fred's your aunt. Fanny's your aunt. Fanny's your aunt? Yeah. Fran. Fran. We'll say Fran. And then there's one more piece that we put on just for the utility. It's just this cover here. It goes on over the top. Gotta open that up a bit. Then when they put the meter on after the inspection, they'll put a seal on that. And that's it. Let's just stand back and have a look at it. There we go. One completed meter base, and that's what's inside your meter. Anyway, guys, there's a crash course on how we mount a meter and tie in all the mains, and I uh, hope you like it. Uh, if you want to see more on metering or host wiring, click the link up here in the corner, or come on over to our website where everything is organized in a nice, searchable fashion. We'll see you guys next week on the next one.